Okay, so kind of to that, um, if you remember last week, this is going to kind of be the pattern for these talks as we do kind of the, you know, the, the kind of class material talk, and then we do a little bit of a kind of a spiritual uh, reflection, and then we pray together. Okay, and so I want to kind of build on what we were, what you were just talking about with um, kind of works of mercy, you know, the the uh, you know the, the volunteer hours, service hours, and everything else. And if you remember last week, I gave you a little bit of homework. I didn't. I'm not, we're not checking it because there's really no way to check it. I'm giving you this homework again, not for my benefit, but but for yours. And so you can either choose. To, to take it or leave it, to use it or not use it. But I said, if you don't pray normally, if you don't pray regularly, give it a shot and try to pray for about five hours a day. Not five hours a day, that's a little bit much. Five minutes a day, that makes more sense. So for five minutes a day, just give it a shot. It's not a long time. You know, I've already been talking since I turned the camera on for a minute and 15 seconds. You know, so we'd be like a good chunk of the way through it if we were doing it for five minutes a day. Five minutes a day, though, and the reason why is, as we talked about last week, um, that we can sit here in class, we can learn about things that have to do with God, you know, in all the faith formation classes, and in this one about kind of confirmation and some of the background of confirmation and everything else. We can learn about it, but that's not enough because the whole purpose of this is to be in a relationship with God. It's to enter into a relationship with God. And so we need prayer, that communication, like we need with anybody else that we're in a relationship with, right? You know, so if there's somebody who's a very good friend of yours, it's hard to say they're a very close friend of yours and you don't talk to them ever. Or you hardly ever talk to them. You know, and so we need to kind of build up that kind of relationship. We need to kind of build up that, you know, you know, that, that, that relationship with God so that we can be in union with God, as it were. And one of the things that we begin, you begin to notice if you start to pray regularly, it's what I'd like to have you do is if you started praying that five minutes a day, I want you to keep doing it. If you got good at it and you wanted to do more, add, bring it up to six or seven. You know, add a little bit more. Kind of grow in that, develop in that. Now, like I said, in that prayer, it can be any kind of prayer. It can be reading from the Bible. It can be praying a rosary. It can be, you know, just sitting there talking to God. It can be any number of things. There's no particular thing you have to do during that five, six, seven minutes. But you have to be in that communication with God. Because what we find out in our lives as Christians is that prayer is kind of like the lifeblood of the Christian if you think about blood, what does it do? You know, it circulates through the body and it gives life to the body. It brings oxygen to all the different parts of the body. That's what blood does, right? It gives life. If you cut off, you know, a portion of the body from the flow of blood, then that portion of the body slowly dies. You know, if you cut it off from the brain, then we die, then you die. But if you cut it off from even like, you know, a finger or whatever, you know, that, that part, portion of the body dies. And so we need that constant renewal from God. We need that constant renewal in prayer, that constant renewal in love, all of that kind of over and over again, cycling over and over again. But there's another question that we ask, and that's, okay, if we pray, if we're in that relationship with God, if we're doing all of those things, what do we do? Because it's not enough when we think of, you know, the body, for, for, the, for the human body, to have that life in the body. Well, once we have that physical life in the body, we're supposed to do something with that life, right? So I'm up here talking right now. You're, you know, hopefully listening. You're going to leave here in a little bit and, you know, about 20 minutes and you're going to be doing some other things. But once we have the life in the body, we have to do something with that life. It is the same thing works spiritually too. We have that relationship with God, we have that prayer, we have that, you know, circulating through the spiritual body, renewing and refreshing and bringing life to our spirit, to our soul. And so now the question is, what do we do? What are we going to do with that now? Okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to start small. 
And it ties back into the, you know, works of mercy that you talked about. It ties into what we talked about in the earlier part of t this evening with, um, you know, with acts of love. And you remember what I said earlier is that sometimes it's hard to act lovingly. Because it's our natural disposition usually to act for our own benefit, right? To like, you know, you know, want what's good for us, to, you know, to get what we need, to all that. That's our natural disposition. And it's sometimes hard to act for other people. That's why, and that's what she was, I think, just saying, um, that that's why we have you do service hours, works of mercy, everything else, is to develop the habit of doing good things, of doing charitable things, as we talked about with prayer. A habit, we want to build up good habits. So if you pray for five minutes a day, if you prayed for five minutes on Monday, it makes it a little bit easier to do it on Tuesday, which makes it a little bit easier to do it on Wednesday, and so on and so forth. And eventually you get kind of where it's really easy to do five minutes, and so then maybe you start doing six, or maybe you start doing seven, you start adding a little bit on. Right? What we need as human beings is we need to kind of be broken out of this constant self-interest, self-service, looking out just for ourselves, and to kind of seek the good for, of others. Now eventually, if we get really, really good at it, we just kind of do it naturally. But until we do it naturally, until it becomes second nature to us to, to do good for another person, to look for you know, th ways that we can help other people, we need to go about doing it very deliberately. And so the more we kind of do the whole idea, they like say, behind doing service hours or a work of mercy or what I'm about to ask you to do in a minute is to build up the habit so that the next time you're faced with a situation, it makes it easier to do the right thing. It makes it easier to look out for the good of the other, to act in a loving way, to act in a moral way. Okay? So... Last week, like I said, I asked you to do something very small. I asked you to pray for five minutes, which isn't that much. I've been talking now for seven minutes and seven seconds, okay? Which is not a long time. You know, we would have been over already. What I'd like to ask you to do this week, in addition to that, in addition to keep praying, to keep that blood moving, that spiritual life blood moving, is to, every evening this week, just figure something you're going to do the next day for somebody else to work towards the good of someone. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Like I said, praying for five minutes isn't a lot. But it's a start. And it's good. It builds up a good habit. And eventually that five minutes a day will change your life. Well, what I'm going to ask you to do this week, and again, there's no way I'm going to check it. I'm not going to ask you next week if you did it. But this is for your own benefits, for your own good. I want you to take... They said every evening, they say, okay, tomorrow, here's a specific, concrete thing I'm going to do to love another person, to act lovingly towards another person. It doesn't have to be something big. You'd be like, maybe there's this person that you don't really like, you know, that you see every once in a while. And I'm going to smile at that person and say hi to them. Just that, just a small thing. But I know it'll make them happy. You know, maybe, maybe you know, I'm going I'm to hold the door open for somebody. That's the example I gave earlier. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just a, I'm going to take, you know, five dollars and I'm going to give it to charity tomorrow. Something small. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. Like I say, these acts of love, sometimes it's a small sacrifice for a small good. Smiling at somebody that you don't really like. And sometimes if you don't like somebody and you see them, you want to kind of scowl at them so that they know that you don't like them. But maybe you can put up for a little bit of effort and just say, hey, how you doing? And smile at them and kind of be nice to them. And maybe that will be a small sacrifice for you. And maybe it'll bring about a little bit of good for that person. Make them feel a little bit better. Make them feel loved. You know? Because if you get good at doing the small things, the little sacrifices for the little good, you'll get better at doing the big ones. It'll become second nature to you. In the Gospels, Jesus said that those who are trusted, those who are faithful in small things will be trusted with great things, with big things. But those who can't even be trusted with small things, what little they have will be taken away. Which means that if we can't even do the little things, the little acts of kindness, the little kind of sacrifices, how do we expect that we're going to do the good things, the heroic things, the great things? If we want to be great men and women, 
We have to, we have to start small. We have to do the little things. Just the little things. And so, and again, maybe it's not second nature. Very rarely is it second nature for people to just do those things. Like I said, it's second nature to scowl at the person you don't like. It's second nature to get to where you're going quicker so you don't hold the door open for somebody. It's, uh, you know, get what I want, what I need. You know, if you drive, to not let this person pull out in front of you because I got to go. And if I let them go, then that's going to slow me down. But if we deliberately just decide, tomorrow I'm going to do this one thing, and it's a very deliberate thing I'm going to do. It makes it a little bit easier. It makes it a little bit better. It's going to make it slowly second nature. And it's going to start changing the way you look at the world, too. Because here's the interesting thing that happens. And I've seen it. This isn't just something that I read about. It's not something that, you know, you know I, I read about in the Bible somewhere or in the catechism or something. It's something I've seen in my own life with my own eyes, looking at people, seeing people. And it's this, if you look out just for your own happiness, you will be miserable. It will make you unhappy. But if you seek to serve other people, if every day you go out into the world and you try to work towards the good of other people, you will be happy. Just like that little five minutes of prayer, like I said, will change your life if you're willing to do it. These little acts of kindness, these little acts of charity, these little acts of love that you're pre-planning now, they will change your life too. You'll be happier. You'll feel more fulfilled. And so that's why I want you to do it. Just this week, give it a shot. Seven times. Just one time through. And see what it does to your outlook, see what it does to your way of thinking, see what it does to other people around you and how happy it makes other people around you. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna pray a deck of the rosary as we did last week. If you remember, I said last week, when we pray a rosary, we can do one or two things. We can meditate on the words of the Hail Mary that we pray over and over and over again. And that's a good thing to do because very often we're so familiar with it, we can kind of, we say it and we don't really think about it because we know it so well. Or we can meditate on the particular mystery of the rosary um, that we're saying. And the one I want to say this evening, if you want to meditate on that, just think about it as we pray a decade of the rosary and we pray it slowly. Um, the decade of the rosary I want to pray is the crucifixion and death of Jesus. Because we were, ta we were talking about small acts of kindness, small sacrifices for small goods. But we also talked about how the greatest good of another person is their salvation. Eternal life, eternal happiness. You know, that's the greatest good, obviously. What could possibly be greater than that? Jesus was willing to sacrifice a great deal to suffer and to die on the cross to bring about our greatest good. And so as we're maybe kind of starting a little bit and trying a little bit harder to do the small sacrifices, to act more morally, to act more lovingly, it's good for us as we're kind of starting out and maybe doing a little bit better and trying to put something together, you know, and do our little kind of acts that we're gonna do. It's good to have in front of us and to put in front of us Jesus Christ, suffering on the cross for our salvation, kind of the ideal that we're reaching towards, and we might not get to for a very, very long time, but the kind of ideal that we're looking for, the supreme act of love, which is the crucifixion and then the resurrection of Christ. And so, as you pray this decade of the rosary, slowly we contemplate that supreme act of good. We thank God for that supreme act of good that he was willing to do for us, and we ask for the grace of God for the presence of God, that as we go out into the world and seek to sacrifice, not maybe our lives, but to sacrifice a little bit, that we're willing to imitate him in that way so that we might bring about the good of others. And so, you see, we'll pray our decade of the rosary in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.